Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, we'll be talking about more of my progress with the process of designing this robot here, Shrapnel Mine. Now, as you probably can see, this is an extremely unfinished robot with all the electronics hanging out the back. The idea with this was basically just to combine the two different tests I had done before. So I had one set of tests where I was doing with just this servo saw arm mechanism, and I had another set of tests I was doing with just the drivetrain mount to like a sketchy base. Um, this is just a way of combining those two into one platform. So I have here a carbon fiber nylon 3D printed base plate that has little bits sticking out to mount the uh, front fork hinge points to, screw holes in the bottom to accept the servo mount, and my drive pod mounts. And then I just kind of duct taped all the electronics into a little bundle on the back. And you can see here, tying everything together is actually a little separate project I've been working on, which I'll talk more about in a future video. But basically I designed a custom power distribution board that allows you to plug a bunch of things into XT30 connections and uh, power them all off of one battery with a switch wired directly to the board even with Fingertech switch, though future versions of the board I'll actually be trying to integrate my own switch, but more on that later. You can also see here I painted the, this uh, toothless saw disc orange and black so that eventually when I take videos of it spinning it'll look really cool at high speed or whatever, but for now it is not really functional as a saw. It's just kind of there to act as a counterbalance or, you know, basically act as the weight that the saw will be so I know what the driving dynamics more or less will be like. Though this whole setup right here together is only about half of the three pound weight limit currently. So in my last video, I was actually dealing with division and showing the event recap from the Maze Norwalk Havoc event. Obviously, this guy wasn't anywhere close to ready for competition yet, so it wasn't entered into that one. But with everything with BattleBots going on, I'm not 100% sure if I'll be able to attend in July, but if I do, this guy will be coming with me for July's Norwalk Havoc. Uh, you should definitely watch the uh, Division Norwalk Havoc recap though, because it's a lot of fun. A lot of people seem to like Division. And uh, if you want to see more about Division, then I will actually be doing a live stream on June 6th at 1 p.m. EST, where I will be doing a damage breakdown to show all the damage that Division suffered in its last fight at Norwalk, and also be doing some other repairs live. So make sure to subscribe to get notified about that and tune in on Sunday, June 6th for that. Um, back to the topic at hand, this little guy. Um, you might notice uh, one thing that changed from the drivetrain testing setup is these wheels. There's actually uh, two different things that are pretty big changes with the wheels. So number one is they are now orange, um, but more importantly, the tread is not just molded in orange urethane, it is actually a different shape. So this is the new wheel mold. This is the old wheel mold. So you can see I have the straight ridges in this one and slightly less deep helical ridges in this one. Like it doesn't look like a helix because it's such a short portion of one, but basically the idea was to make it so that if you look at it from the side, these slant over enough that each ridge is kind of blended past the, where the next one is by the time that it goes from here down. So. If you look at a wheel from the side now, it's actually a circle. Whereas before, it was more of this like toothed gear profile. And that makes a huge difference with the smoothness of the ride on the floor. So I can get much more consistent traction. And also I made the grooves smaller in general, which means that there's more surface area contact with the floor to begin with. So this is a much more efficient wheel design. All right, so about now I should be interspersing some clips of this guy actually driving around. Uh, so you can see a couple different things that are important here. Number one, drive power with the wheels that actually get consistent traction is more than adequate. It has no problem pushing around things that weigh more than three pounds, even though this only weighs a pound and a half or less. I think it's about a pound and seven ounces. And it basically is able to drive no matter what position the saw is in. Um, and I think on its head like this, it's kinda 
not great, but if it's in this position, I should be able to manipulate the saw arm to a point where the wheel still touch the ground and it'll have enough acceleration that it'll actually be able to like wheelie itself back onto its wheels somehow or other. So that's definitely good because I was worried about being unable to self right with the wheels towards the back. As long as I make sure that they still make contact when it's upside down with the floor, it looks like that will be fine. So that is one concern that this pro platform definitely helps to abate. So that's great. Um, another thing that I was worried about was the weight distribution, with, especially with the saw back like this. Uh, there isn't a ton of weight in front of the wheels, and it does wheelie a little bit if I accelerate super hard um, with the saw arm back, but I can still accelerate a bit slower and just get to ridiculous speeds. And with the saw arm forward, like I might do if I was going to box rush a spinner anyway, um, it drives pretty well. Uh, I did run into issues with my floor, like floor seams that the floors tend to get caught in, especially when it's like this for whatever reason. But other than that, it seems like it drives really, really well. And I'm really happy with that considering that such a low reduction of only 2.6 to one on the drive. Um, I think the new wheels also helped a ton with turning because you end up having to do some skid steering even with a two wheel drive platform when turning if you're going too quickly. And with these wheels, because they're not making perfect ground contact all the time, it would kind of bounce. And uh, that was making it a lot harder to make sharp turns, which now I don't really have much of an issue with using these new orange wheels. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified about more content in the future. Um, also, make sure to let me know if you have suggestions for topics to cover in future videos in the comments. Thanks for watching!